Welcome back to Learn As You Explore for another MBOT2 tutorial. In the last video, we built a program for the night patrol robot where the robot moved in the dark and stopped when the lights came back on. Today, we'll learn about the quad RGB sensor and how it detects lines. This is important for our future line follower robot project. There is no coding in this video, just the key concepts that you need to understand first before we get to programming. Let's jump in. Before we get into the theory, let's first look at how the quad RGB sensor appears in the mBlock web editor. Go to ide.mblock.cc. And as always, we will first add the mbot2 robot. Now that we have the mbot2 robot added, let's scroll down to the quad RGB sensor category and drag this block onto your workspace. This block has three settings. The first setting is the sensor ID. If you have multiple quad RGB sensor modules connected, you can choose the one that you're interested in. For the standard mbot2, let's leave this as one. Next, there's the detection mode setting. Since we're interested in detecting lines, we will leave this as line. And finally, we have our status value setting. This tells us what the sensor sees using numbers from zero all the way through 15. The numbers also have a binary form shown to the right, which is key to understanding how the sensor works. Now let's go over what these numbers mean. To do that, let's first review what the quad RGB sensor is. Here is a picture of the mbot2 robot, and this is the quad RGB sensor as it is mounted on the mbot2 robot. Let's take a look at what the quad RGB sensor looks like before being mounted on the robot chassis. This is what it looks like, so now let's take a closer look. The sensor module has four small sensors labeled L2, L1, R1, and R2. These are the four sensors, and this is why the sensor module is called a quad RGB sensor, where quad means four. Each of these sensors can detect two things. First, they can detect if there is a line underneath the sensor, and second, they can detect what the color of the surface beneath the sensor is. The color is defined by the amount of red, green, and blue light that gets reflected by the surface, and the sensor measures this amount of reflection. We'll cover color detection later on. For now, let's focus on line detection. Here's another look at the quad RGB sensor. If we split the sensor in half, there's a left side and a right side. The sensors on the left are identified as L1 and L2, and the sensors on the right are identified as R1 and R2. L1 and R1 are the left and right sensors respectively that are closest to the center of the sensor, whereas L2 and R2 are the left and right sensors respectively that are furthest away from the center. Each sensor reports a zero or one value, where zero means there's no line detected and one means that there is a line that's detected underneath that sensor. So let's go through some examples now. In this first example, there is a line that is under L2, but no line under L1, R1, and R2. Since we have the definition here that zero is reported when no line is detected, and one is reported when a line is detected, we should expect L2 to report one, while L1, R1, and R2 are expected to report zeros. If you followed along this far, you're doing fantastic. Now, all we need to do from here is to convert this binary representation of 1000 to a decimal number. We have four digits. The rightmost digit is in the zeroth place. And going left from there, we have the first, second, and third places. Since these are binary values, we use the powers of two, where two is the base, and the power is the place of the current digit within the binary representation. Hence, for R2, it would be two to the power of zero, which equals one. 
For R1, it would be 2 to the power of 1, which equals 2. For L1, it would be 2 to the power of 2, which equals 4. And finally, for L2, it would be 2 to the power of 3, which equals 8. To convert this binary representation of 1000 to decimal, the last step would be to multiply the binary value with the power of 2 corresponding to it and sum up all of these products. This looks something like this. So here we're doing 1 times 8 plus 0 times 4 plus 0 times 2 plus 0 times 1. And this, when summed up together, gives us the decimal value of 8. And this decimal value of 8 is the representation for the situation where there is a line under L2, but no line under L1, R1, and R2. Let's now take a second example to drive this home. In this example, there is a line under L1 and R1, but no line under L2 and R2. In this situation, we expect L2 to report 0, L1 and R1 to report 1, and R2 to report 0. Let's convert this from binary to decimal. So we have 0, 1, 1, 0. Let's bring in the powers of 2 corresponding to each binary digit. Do the sum of the products. In this case, that would be 0 times 8 plus 1 times 4 plus 1 times 2, plus 0 times 1. And this equals 4 plus 2, which equals 6. And this 6 is the final decimal representation for a situation where there is a line under L1 and R1, but no line under L2 and R2. If we list every possible combination of the four sensors, either detecting or not detecting a line, we get 16 such combinations. Each of these combinations has exactly one decimal value associated with it, and it goes from 0 through 15. Does that seem familiar? It should, because this matches what we saw in the mBlock software. The Quad RGB sensor module packs all four sensor readings into one number, making it easier to process in code. Pretty cool, right? Congratulations! You've gained quite a lot of knowledge about how the Quad RGB sensor works in this video. In the following tutorials, we will use this knowledge to program the line follower robot. Stay tuned. If you found value in this video, hit the like button and subscribe to learn as you explore for more MBOT2 tutorials. Here are some of my other videos that you may find helpful. Happy programming, and I'll see you in the next one.